when I bought this on Amazon, the, did you read the log line of it all, like the quote of it? No. It, all it says literally is the quote of this movie from Amazon is an underachiever and a snide accountant save a business. That, that's wow. it. I mean, it's kind of the story. That's Riveting. It, that's <laughs> it, and it's a spoiler. <laughs> Explain a movie bad. sharp oh nice yeah yeah. Ooh, yeah i think that's exactly yeah. what it is yeah, yeah. yeah. totally Wait, well we totally. tuned down a half step right yeah. <laughs> yeah, i like yeah, that yeah. the can opening did kind of a reverse snare effect it's like yeah <laughs> deaf leopard snare <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you throw it down a hallway <laughs> yeah. well hello there and welcome to a brand new episode of the confused breakfast podcast do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Of course. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. But there's something truly special about taking a ride in your dad's cherry 1967 Plymouth GTX convertible, picking a movie out by hand, and taking it home with you. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two guys that ate a lot of paint chips as kids, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sean Breyer yeah. and AJ Benz. How the heck are you? Well, no one told me they were made of paint. They just said they were chips. Ah, so I, uh, I'll be honest, I tried a paint chip because of this movie. Like I was like, what's the big deal? And well, I, just, the, I was the, like... The key oh. is, is what year was that paint actually made? True. Right. True. 1978 or before, or prior, like yeah. that's it's going to taste sweet. That's lead. I could you have a lot. I could have lead poisoning. Did right it now. taste sweet? You know, I don't remember. So that could be a problem too. Okay. Yeah. So this yeah. this podcast <laughs> this is, is going off. Concerning. People are like, "Oh, they did Tommy Boy. I hate it." Yeah. <laughs> Boys, it is time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss the first movie to feature Chris Farley in a leading role, a movie that is arguably one of the most quotable movies in history, Mm -hmm. a movie that hides its Shakespearean inspiration calmly inside a thin candy shell of (laughs) masturbation jokes and fat jokes. We are, of course, talking about 1995's Tommy Boy. And for those looking to find this one, you got to shell out the bucks on this one. I know you got your old VHS. If you don't have that VHS player, you got to. I I didn't find it streaming anywhere. So you got, I think, Amazon Prime. I had to pay the monies for that. Same for you guys. Yep. Yep. It's worth it. Just go do it. Oh, well. As of the recording of this podcast in late March 2022. Mm hmm. So, in order to properly dissect and review this movie with the modern eye, as always, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, let's start with you, man. Tell us the first time you saw it and what your nostalgic rating of this movie is. Well, all right. Well, all right. I'll take you on back to a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a young AJ. A young AJ. Uh, Prepubescent AJ. I, I, I do believe I remember having this vhs oh, yeah. from um fa- i must have been mr movies at the time must have been mr movies for us at the time but uh tommy boy and i remember the cover of it so vividly with with chris farley oh, yeah. and david spade on the front so um dude i remember watching this movie it's just the most quintessential my brothers are watching it kind of a thing and uh I probably shouldn't have been, but I was tagging along, yep. and I, I just remember like laughing and rolling on the floor. I mean, just taking it all in. But honestly, probably because my brothers found it so funny, yep. not yeah. because I even understood the <laughs> jokes. You know what I mean? Yo, like yeah. that was why it was so funny to me. So, but that being said, I also remember it just being an absolute great time. And I thought Chris Farley was the funniest person on the world in the mm. world. So um, I am going to have to give this movie as a kid an 8.4. Nice. 8.4 for the age. Sean, what do you got, man? Kind of the same, like always. Um, this is like this is just like a comfort movie for my family, it seemed. Mm. I, I remember mostly watching it with my dad. Um, 
uh, when we lived in or when he lived in Illinois. Uh, it would just either be on TV, I think, or he would just like have it on. I never remember like starting the movie from beginning <laughs> to end. I just yeah. I remember yeah. like going into it. And like I don't know if it was just like that's where my memory started or <laughs> that's where he started the movie, um, but I just I remember laughing along with him. I probably didn't understand any of the jokes either. I just thought Chris Farley was hilarious, and uh, yeah, back then I probably have to say yeah, that's a fun movie. It's a seven. <laughs> that's a fun movie. That's I like a seven. It. I like it. It's fun. Uh, this was one of those movies where we we rented it and my parents went oh shit and oh, they immediately no. bought it like they go we're gonna let's just get this out of the way let's own this on VHS yeah this was definitely a VHS that me and my brother wore out like I mean we played this all the time uh, interestingly enough I was thinking back I never owned it on DVD mm. like I don't know I don't remember seeing this ever on DVD it was almost one of those movies where it was a VHS thing and then it this. Mm. Never got put out on DVD because yeah. did you did you ever own it on DVD? I, I don't think it was ever DVD. I think it's us. just on TV like right yeah. now. So yeah, it's it just, just <laughs> always on TV. People never exists. felt the need to buy it. <laughs> yeah. But we wore that VHS out. Um, I probably hadn't sat down to watch this movie in like eight to ten years though. Damn. Oh wow! So like that's what's really cool. But I watched it so much as a kid, and now I have to do this like non nostalgia dive. But I'm I'm probably a niner. I'm talking on a walkie talkie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is really where I'm at. <laughs> niner, niner. That was a niner. Huh? <laughs> That's where I'm at. And so uh, we do have an executive producer from our Patreon, Josh Miller. Oh yeah, aka Douglas Bubble Trousers. He's joining us on the show today. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's his p- nostalgic review of the movie. Thinking back to Tommy Boy is almost the perfect nostalgic time for me. I was in jun- I was a junior in high school, had my license for a year, so was pretty much allowed to govern my life as long as I didn't stay out too late and kept my dad informed of where I was. Oh, yeah. Which back then, the ability of constant contact did not exist. No cell phones, but I did have one of those badass translucent pagers. Oh, yeah, no. page me. He gave me his number. I'm not going to put it out there. He might still have that. <laughs> yeah. He said page me? He said page me. <laughs> this Never, was- I haven't heard that in forever. <laughs> Did somebody page me? <laughs> yeah. This was the height of Chris Farley's short but hilarious career. Great work on SNL got him some great supporting parts and headlining some of the funniest movies ever to a teenage boy at the time. I was clearly their target audience. I know I saw it multiple times in the theaters when it came out on video. It was a constant rental for one fifty a day until they finally sold the VHS, previously viewed for like 20 bucks. I probably spent two hundred dollars total on this movie. There are so <laughs> many. There are so many other movies like this. The slapstick, juvenile humor during this period. I'd have a hard time picking which one is actually my favorite. This movie is massively quotable. Thinking back, I'd give most of them a nine point zero. So this one is a nine point zero. Can't just hand out tens willy nilly. Yeah. Right. That ten is yeah. coming up. He says. Okay. I'll tell you that right okay. now. All right. So that combined with Douglas Bubble Trousers, we are in 8.35 nice. for a it's nostalgic rating. There. That is currently number five of any movie we've done. That wow. is that is right below Three Ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and I mean, like, think about it. That is oh, perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that is absolutely perfect. That is yeah. nostalgically a, a high ranker for that sure. Makes sense. And we are going to rip the shit out of this yeah. movie when we take this nostalgic veil <laughs> away. But before we start the section where we learn all all the pertinent, important details in the movie. Let's talk about our amazing sponsor, Felix Grey. This company makes affordable and incredibly stylish glasses that filter out the harmful blue light that is all around us from our computer, phones, and TVs. They are 15 times more effective than all other blue light glasses at filtering this blue light. The quality is absolutely unbelievable, and you will love all the options for different styles and colors. Age, man, how you been liking yours? Uh, Just dandy. I haven't taken them off, like, except to go to sleep. Like, I just wear them all the time. You should wear like, them when you sleep. I probably should. I should see if it helps my sleep. It'll probably, I mean, it helps me get to sleep. Maybe it I helps know. me sleep. Oh, you're right. Oh, oh, man. Maybe you'll remember your dreams better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You'll, I'm excited. you'll see the future. <laughs> Can blue light go through your eyeball lids? I don't know. I think probably. so. Probably. Makes sense. I think so. So, and yeah. So, I've been I've been digging them. I, like I say, it's been my go-to pair of glasses. Uh, like, I, last time I had to buy glasses, I bought, like, three pairs because I usually just wear one <laughs> set until it just literally breaks in half <laughs> yeah. and so i bought a bunch and now i've only been wearing these for like the last i don't know since we've gotten them yeah so this is the only set only pair that i've been wearing well so. that's see look aj's testimonial right there Boom. you can even decide between prescription non-prescription and readers 
Obviously, our exposure to blue light is not going away. That is a 100% fact. So do yourself a favor. Grab a pair of these amazing glasses. We all have them. We love them. We know you will, too. Check them out. Uh, FelixGrayGlasses.com slash confused. confused. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash confused. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. Go do it. Go, go, go. Sean, now you got to do it. Hook us up with those pertinent, important details for the Thomas yeah. boy. All right. Please. Tommy boy. Thomas boy. Them details, you want them? Do okay. you want them? <laughs> Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> Produced by Lauren Michaels and Barnaby <laughs> Thompson. Written by Bonnie okay. and Terry Turner uh, with an uncredited uh, uh, rewrite of Fred Wolf. Music by David Newman. Cinematography by Victor J. Kemper. Edited by William Kerr. Directed by Peter Siegel. Our boy's back. Yeah, that's uh, our boy. Wedding singer and uh, the 50 First Dates. How about that? Good you guys man. like that? Cast, Chris Farley, David Spade, Brian Dennehy, Bo Derrick, Dan Aykroyd, Julie Warner, Sean McCann, Zach Greiner, and an uncredited Rob Lowe. Right. He's not That's kind of weird. He's not anywhere. Like, even on, on IMDb, you have to, like, dig for his name. I'm like, what the fuck? I, f- I just forgot his name. I'm like, what the hell is his name? <laughs> I couldn't find it. <laughs> well, and what was the reason for that? He was he was obligated to Stephen King's The Stand? Well, yeah. uh, he... I, is what it said? I saw an interview with him, and it said that originally it was it was supposed to be him and Chris Farley... Oh, he was going to be the like a, the brother, like, yeah. Like, hijinks, it was supposed to be right? like the brother hijinks and everything like that. And then they wanted, I think Chris Farley wanted David Spade just to right. just to be in the movie. And so Rob Lowe kind of got like shelved a little bit. But he's like, I still want to do it. I still want to just like be funny with Chris Farley and everything. He's like, I'll just be like a fun surprise. So don't, you don't even have to credit me or anything like that. That's pretty so awesome. I would just, I would love thinking about that and just being like, and you're in the theater and you're like, what the hell, Rob Lowe? Yeah, is exactly. In this? That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, dude, like he's, we'll get to it. He's so fucking good in this. Originally, the screenplay written by the Turner pair was titled Billy the Third, a Midwesterner. With Billy Madison being filmed at the same time, the producers wanted to change the title to Tommy Boy, which people hated at first. Mm. People didn't get it. They're like, I don't, why would it be Tommy Boy yet? Just, <laughs> it just kind of stuck after a while. Oh. The idea came from a pitch from Peter Siegel wanting to do a buddy movie with Chris Farley. Originally, the film was pitched with Rob Lowe playing the role of Richard, but Chris Farley knew that David Spade was a perfect fit for the role. So, spoiler alert for my note earlier, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Adam Sandler was a secondary choice for the role of Richard just because it was gonna either gonna be David Spade or Adam Sandler. Yeah. Can you imagine Chris Farley, Chris Farley and Adam Sandler in this? Like it almost m- feels like it would have been too much. It, it would have been too much. Like and you're you're asking uh, Adam Sandler to do like later things like he did things he did later in his career yeah at the time he's literally doing Billy Madison that's yeah, true yeah. right so that's true complete 180 in my mind it were, yeah I, I it would have been cool to think about that but nah I'm, what's I'm in. the is it an SNL skit where they're like looking at something and they're like <laughs> no. Like there's that there's that gif that it, it is it's a it was a it was a beer Schmidt's gay Sh- yeah, Schmidt's yeah. gay <laughs> and it was a beer where like they bought a house and the pool was all gross yeah. Yeah. and like they cracked a beer open yeah. and the pool just turned magical and all these dudes and speedos <laughs> oh, dude. start coming out uh, <laughs> Chris Farley <laughs> lifts his glasses up. I think I'm gonna like it here. oh yeah the full uh, glasses yeah <laughs> Schmidt's gay Schmidt's gay. <laughs> So at least we got that. Wow. <laughs> we could review that. Or you, you want to just review that commercial? <laughs> <laughs> I'd try it. Filming under the title Rocky Road, the film shot mostly in Toronto and L.A. So they had just like a synonym for like, they kind of wanted to keep it under wraps a little bit for some reason. So they just had like the film canisters say like Rocky Road as the title of the Rocky film. Rocky Road. Because Tommy Boy would have totally given it away. Yeah, exactly. Right. now, yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, released on March 31st, 1995, Tommy Boy earned $8 million its opening weekend and would eventually go on to make $32.7 million and become a cult classic. Mm. You guys. Well, next up, AJ is going to do the research for us. Talk us about the ratings, critical reviews of this movie when it came out. What do you got, man? You guys, we're always here. It's time for your what favorite time is it? meter. The, the tomato, tomato meter. meter. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there because okay. we need to we need to make an official sound bite. We need so a sound bite. Yeah. I yeah. just want to put that in your brain. We okay. need it when we go tomato meter. It needs to go. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody wants to make that out there in our listener yeah. land, we would love it. Yeah, as, long crazy. As, as long as sh- uh, I'll do that, <laughs> and then Sean has to do the gross. You know how to do it. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? And then Mike, 
you just be beautiful. I just played the, f- I played the Phil Collins <laughs> drum fill on in there. Oh, yes. Gross. All right, we did it. There it I is. Love you this. cool with that? Yeah. All right, just made it. Okay, oh, real quick, just good. record your parts in the microphone. All right. Give, give me a good squish here. Is that good? Do it one more time. <laughs> there it is. Gross. Okay, you guys, you heard you heard magic. Wait till next time. You're going to hear the full one. <laughs> Oh man, this is my, this, this is my favorite. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> all right, well, um, funny you should mention the cult classicness of this movie. Is it funny? Um, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, well, this actually came in as a big old. <laughs> oh man, forty-one uh, percent from Gross. critics. That Gross. of any movie we've done so far, that's bottom ten. That's right below Rad, right above Bloodsport and Ninja Turtles. Well. Below blood, below blood, below blood, spurt. <laughs> Whoa, oh, uh, below blood spurt. Okay, <laughs> below blood spurt. <laughs> well, the audience is wholeheartedly disagreed at ninety percent. Yeah, that's about for right. that. Okay. Now, what's the ratio with that? Is was uh, what, what movie did we just have where it was uh, completely opposite? That's forty nine percent right there. So it was no, it, it's still not. It was sixty three percent on uh, uh, Boondock Saints. Boondock that's Saints. right. Boondock that's Saints right. is yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah, that's the biggest discrepancy. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Nothing will ever touch that. Yeah. Uh, well, we have to say on IMDb, right dead center, seven point one out of ten. All right. Funny uh, enough, that is the absolute middle of anything we've rated so far. That is smack dab in the middle. Just dead center? Yep, tied with the mummy. Wow. Nice. There it is. I like okay. having that there. It seems comfortable. Yep. Um, I I, uh, I got a few, uh, a few good critical reviews here for us. Uh, let's see. We've got... Tommy Boy is one of the film one of these films that you can watch over and over again. It seems to be every buddy on every buddy movie list, and it's always out at Blockbuster. I love the I just love the <laughs> reference. That's actually yeah. a really good I call. I just loved the reference of Blockbuster. They only yeah, had so. one of them and it was always yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah. It's probably because I kept it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's probably because I just kept it. Uh, just make your own copy. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was that was IGN. They gave it a seventy out of a hundred. Okay. Uh, the Boston Globe, Jay Carr, he's been getting about as popular as Raj. Okay. <laughs> Not enough for a nickname yet. Uh, no. Uh, we'll think of one. All right. Sixty three out of a hundred. A little bit of a longer one, but I think it's a, a solid one. It's more of a throwback to one of the first SNL movie spinoffs, Steve Martin's The Jerk. It's loaded with physical comedy and lists Farley's SNL foil, David Spade, to serve as Abbott to Farley's Costello. Ooh. Farley plays the blimp on uppers. Spade plays the pinched little know-it-all nerd with a chip, a computer chip, probably, on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> what mostly keeps it going is the sheer gusto with which Farley throws himself into the clowning. It's passably entertaining uh, if you don't think about it too much. And to see it, to see it is to realize that it works mightily at getting you to not think too much. Mm. So, that's a good point. Uh, Empire said, Against the odds of a feeble script and uninspired direction the duo do, in fact, grow on you. And there are some, and there are smattering, uh, excuse me, and there are a smattering of silly laughs. But when a comedy relies as heavily on, as this does, on modestly endearing personality, it's not good enough. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple of funny, uh, good ones here. Some some low ends. Okay. Let's hear it. Uh, uh, this is a one out of ten in 2018. Oh boy. Jacob John Taylor one said it is really not funny. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> That's not funny. This is not a funny movie. It is overrated. I think people will like a comedy movie because it is a comedy movie. Uh, yeah. It really does not have to be funny. Most people just think everything is hilarious. This movie is like most comedies. It does not have a good storyline. In, in fact, it has an awful storyline. Not the most people who are big on comedy movies would care. Okay? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I want to be inside your brain when you first read these. Oh, the, the person you're picturing. I just I want to see it. <laughs> it was should have a ske- someone should sketch the person. <laughs> it's mostly just for for this one. It was mostly somebody like sitting at back in their on their couch, like <laughs> <laughs> no. trying not to get Cheetos on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, 
<laughs> oh, somebody's going to love this. Not funny. As it's playing in <laughs> yeah, the background. Exactly. <laughs> As they laugh at something that happens in the background. Yeah. Like, holy shnikes. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a two out of ten. A fat, sad guy isn't funny in himself. He's got to do something funny too. Uh, that's what that's what Kerna Chopin said uh, on in two thousand five. Okay. This movie sure deserves a better grade. This is a two out of ten, by the way. This this movie sure deserves a better grade. That is, if it was intended to appeal to kids one through nine years old. But the movie makes adult sex related jokes, so it isn't made for a younger audience. I see. Funny. <laughs> Well, I did smile, not laugh, <laughs> at least three times while watching. It's just too boring story. That's exactly how he wrote it. Too boring story. It's just too boring story. I do give it two stars because I smiled a few times. Chris Farley plays just a guy that is just fat and stupid. A fat, stupid guy isn't funny in himself. He's got to do something funny, too. As the title said, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you can't take uh, no. You can't take you words remember? out of remember your, when he no. said that. You <laughs> can't re- read back your review and go, "That's the best line." That's the title of my review. <laughs> he, he he did what they do in the movies. No, he said no. the movie title no, in the movie. No, <laughs> no, this, they did the strict. They did stop the breaking bed. This one's over. <laughs> oh, and, this, on. and this is how we got here. I just have to do this last part because he says, "Stay away from this one, folks." A rainy day is funnier. And then he had to explain his. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he didn't. He said in parentheses, that's not a film title. I meant an actual rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate him. <laughs> he's almost, he's top five most hated <laughs> people really so bad. far. He's he, really he or she. I mean, it could be a Whoever. Yeah, yeah who we don't was. discriminate on yeah, we don't. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> if you're, if you're on a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> that's it's right. A, it might just be a they. I don't know. It's, that's right. That's fine. They are a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> they are a piece of shit. <laughs> they are. <laughs> So, <laughs> no punctuation. All right, I'm um, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit here, guys, because this is the last one. I found this. It was a, a review, a five star review that somebody gave, five out of fives. Um, and this is uh, Jan Abel, two years ago, said, uh, "Ask most critics, and they will dismiss this movie in a heartbeat. Some have called it called it juvenile, while others say it is a complete waste of the viewer's time. So, is it silly? Sure, but it is also a heartfelt and touching, heartfelt and touching at the same time." If you look past all the slapstick and the goofiness, you'll find some very lovable, sweet characters with the very talented Chris Farley leading the way. But it's the last scene that, the mo- that moves me the most. When his deceased father sends him a gust of wind to carry his sailboat to Michelle's house, Tommy's childlike wonder is truly endearing. Had he lived longer, we would have seen great things from this comic genius. Sadly, his dreams of becoming a serious actor would never be realized. But for this viewer, however, that is immaterial. For I have already witnessed his genius, and I will surely miss him. Rest in peace, Chris Farley. That's fucking great. Beautiful. So, just I'm had gonna, to get that one in there. I'm going to ruin your pretty moment. Our boy Please. Roger Ebert uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. said, and I quote, No one is funny in Tommy Boy. There are no memorable lines. <laughs> so you're Roger wrong. Ebert, you're completely off the mark. That's the most off the mark review I've ever heard anyone I say think of he, a movie. I think he put it in his like shit pile of movies. I think he like I think he's I think he he's did got he a, redeem it. I think he's no, I think he's got a book that's just like these are the movies you don't want to watch. I'm like how why would you even take the time one to like make a book of all your bad reviews? It just yeah. seems like very counterproductive. It's like you want to like heighten up the movies that you really like, right? Why would you talk why would you put out a book of bad reviews? That sounds like a book we need to get a hold of. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and, and review every one of those movies. If there's a free copy, I'm not spending money on it. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I ain't uh, paying his estate nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so we are seconds away from reviewing this movie scene by scene with a modern That's eye. Me. But first, I want to take the time to thank everybody who's gotten out there to buy some of that Cedar Ridge whiskey. They've been sending photos, sending reviews of their experience. Uh, we told the story a couple weeks ago about uh, Terry Orr from North Carolina. He actually yeah. ordered his sampler pack, uh, which get which is awesome because you get like all the different Cedar Ridges and you try oh, it. Yeah. He said he loved it. Said he's going to be buying a bottle. I think he's going to get a bottle of the regular bourbon. That was his favorite. Cool. Uh, John Devlin from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He sent a photo of the straight bourbon that he ordered. Uh, he said that it's already gone, that all of his Dang. friends drank the entire bottle, and that they're going to start carrying it in his bar, which is amazing. Sorry oh. about your rough week. I, I know, dude. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and we chatted a bit. He didn't think it was as good of a sipper bourbon, yeah, but yeah. he loved it in the old fashions. And I will agree with that generally. Sure, like if you sure. want to, if you want to know what we think about it, uh, that bourbon is is a really 
amazing bourbon, but sometimes it's best in cocktails. Mm-hmm. Like like straight, it tastes great straight, but if you're looking for like the sipper, you know, you got to get like the quintessential single malt right. um, or some of their single barrels. Like go join them on social media, yeah. Cedar Ridge, because uh, if they do those single barrel releases, oh, man. That mm-hmm. last one we had was phenomenal. Woo! It's crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous that we drank all of it. But no. uh, if you're if you're, <laughs> you're a whiskey jealous drink- of yourself, yeah, <laughs> I'm jealous of my past life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're a whiskey drinker or have someone in your life who is, <laughs> please stop by your local liquor store. Pick up a bottle. Send us some photos and videos and reviews of your uh, whiskey that you pick up. If you don't have any available in your area, get online. Have it shipped directly to your door like our buddy Terry Orr. We promise you it's amazing. We know you will love it. Uh, I mean, come on. They're just one of the best whiskey distilleries in the U.S. They're in our backyard. Go to CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Link also at ConfusedBreakfast.com and in the episode notes. You won't be disappointed. Please drink responsibly. Please. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. That's (laughs) CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Well, my dudes, what do you say we grab our clip-on ties, stock our office refrigerators with be- uh, s- or soda, <laughs> and check the specs on the end line for the rotary girder because it's time to make a podcast for the American working man because that's who we are and that's, that's who, who we, we care, care about. about. Surprised you didn't know that. Here we <laughs> go. So after seven years at college, Tommy Callahan barely graduates from Marquette University and returns to his hometown of Sandusky, Ohio. His father, Big Tom Callahan, gives him an executive job at the family's auto parts plant, Callahan Auto. In addition to his new job and office, Big Tom reveals that he's planning to marry Beverly Barish Burns and that her son Paul will become Tommy's new stepbrother. I got to say uh, this real quick. When I bought this on Amazon, the, did you read the log line of it all, like the quote of it? No. It, all it says literally is the quote of this movie from Amazon is an underachiever and a snide accountant save a business. That, that's wow. it. I mean, it's kind of the story. That's Riveting. It, that's it. And it's a spoiler. <laughs> Explain a movie bad. Okay. <laughs> no one reads these. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> There's a spoiler in the quote for the movie. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> oh, so they do save it. Okay. Well, why, uh, why am I watching? I, why do I need to watch it? <laughs> Spoilers. How do they save it? Oh. oh. Uh, okay. This young kid looks exactly like this. It Charlie. does. Phenomenal. <laughs> it's so good. I could thought th- it was Aaron Schwartz like the first time. <laughs> like, awesome. uh, but oh, yeah, it was, yeah. it's not Aaron Schwartz from Heavyweights. Could they not afford maybe someone to drive him to school? No, nope. yeah, like that's I'm a sorry. huge house. They don't have like an Alfred or nope. anything like they that to, an to get him to school. <laughs> Big Tom Callahan's been working like hard on his auto business. Yeah, uh, they just don't really pay attention to and him. Really, mom at the young just age. mom's just not doing much of anything. She's yeah. just yelling at him. You're gonna be late. You're gonna be late. Yeah, that's true. you're gonna miss the bus. So, <laughs> okay. It's a it's a really fun intro because like I immediately immediately like Molly commented on this. My wife was going to bed and I, I'm like, I got to watch Tommy boy real quick. And I, she like audibly heard me laughing out loud within 30 seconds of this movie. Cause <laughs> this movie just like immediately put me in a good mood. And yeah. this from moment one, just the, the mannerisms of Chris Farley, when, when he evolves into college guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. when he goes running down the hallway and that guy goes, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. It's like, it's like the ultimate, like, are you going that way? Am I, are you going that way? And it's just like I'm staying right here, and he you're, chooses. You're going. He chooses to go cowering away. <laughs> yeah. Chris Farley. Goes, Whoa! He just gets up and he's like, "I didn't do that." <laughs> and, and like he does the tough guy thing where he stops for the girl. And I had. Hey, a, I've done this before. Where he goes to the door and he's like, "No, please, God!" And he didn't try the other door. I've done that before in my life where I've been like, "Come on, you're closed," and they're looking at me like, "Just try the other one." Other one. You don't. You didn't oh. read the sign that says, "Please, please use other please door." Use other door. Oh, it's. It's push. Oh, okay. Sorry <laughs> yeah. about that. Far, uh, Farley, like, Farley made me immediately smile on this. And what's crazy, he was 33 when this movie was made. And, like, he looked he looked it. Like, yeah. I remember going, he's not in college. Yeah. Even though yeah. that he's been in college for seven years. Seven it's years. like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, you, you definitely look a lot older than a college person at this point. That means it put him at, like, 25, 26 at best yes. in this movie. Yes. You know? So yeah. that's what you got to consider. <laughs> that's a big difference. It, I don't know if you saw that, too. Like, uh, it was filmed at Mar- Marquette. Yeah, and it's, um, it, I think, filmed at, was that in Toronto? It, no. So, no, this, though, he graduates from Marquette. University. In, university in the movie. I don't know if it was actually filmed there or not, but that was where he went 
to college as a real person. Yep. And he played on the rugby team. Correct. When he was there. Correct. So that's like a so he had to have been the one that's like, no, put that Hey, I wanna I wanna graduate from Marquette. I wanna yeah, have yeah. a rugby jersey. Yeah, I want I want it to be like my alma mater. Like, yeah. That's pretty awesome. He's that's pretty much playing really himself cool. in this movie anyway. Yeah. Basically, you know, right. Like it's it might as well just add some add some more of your character to it. I gotta say though, guys, like I'd have been fucking stoked as fuck on a D plus as well. Yeah, <laughs> like that's kind of oh how I my God. I rode through high school my entire life was yeah. just like I got like A's in the video class and writing class and then like every US other history, thing yeah math every other thing was just like D plus I'm like fucking cool I bet yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck yeah I don't care but yeah. but this what fucking history course is this a college like. Final year, like top yeah. tier college history class. The first question yeah. is, what was the first name of Hancock who helped <laughs> curate the, the yeah. Declaration of it? What it just says like U.S. History two hundred one, and he's he's in the two hundred one history class. It's after in his seventh year. Yes, so you know that that's why that professor's just like, God, you're fucking <laughs> still here. <laughs> he just, <laughs> but but like, if you got the same test without this movie, would you have known? That because oh. like because of this movie, no, I'm like yeah, it's obviously John Hancock. No, 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 no. You're you're <laughs> you're 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 making yourself too stupid here, Sean. Everyone knows John Hancock. Yeah. Like the, the only thing everyone knows. The only that. reason I know what potassium is and that bada- bananas have them in it is because of Honey I Shrank the Kids. Honey I Shrank the Kids. Potassium, potassium. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Oh my god! I love the uh, reference though of like he's going to his history class, but when he was a kid, he dropped his history book. Oh, that was oh, that was AJ. my favorite. Re- that was like the little connection there. So I was that's like, why he's so great. stupid. This is why. <laughs> that's why he doesn't know. He lost yeah, his book, of course. <laughs> <laughs> his yeah. friend, his friends seem like they don't like him. Almost really, like they seem like every every joke. They seem like they think that he's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get that vibe at all? A little bit. Well, imagine, yeah. imagine living with Chris. Fire. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'm gonna miss you, man. It's just like I'm gonna. No, you are the best. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh-huh. That is that is the first time I ever saw anyone do that, and then we did that for the rest of our life. All me and my friends, the, fi- the fake make out. Yeah, Aww. exactly. I mean that. I had never seen that elsewhere, and it was fantastic. Um, I. I I do think that his friends kind of went on to form the grunge band Candlebox as well, but yeah. Um, you know, another note that he did all of his own stunts in this movie, and it's like a rare thing, obviously, for like actors. Producers are just like, no, like, you're the talent. We can't have you this do that. Is day one, like, you can't hurt yourself. Even that pratfall, like the table was obviously like balsa wood or some shit, like yeah. pretty soft. But still, that fall, he like face planted like he does yeah. on SNL, obviously. The it's, table kill. It is crazy. Yeah. His physical comedy is unreal. There's mm-hmm. a couple moments I'll bring up later that, I mean, like he goes for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Jesus, dude. Mm-hmm. Like seeing his entrances into like talk shows <laughs> is like gives me anxiety because I'm yeah. like, dude, calm the fuck down. Well, he, he was kind of known, like there are several times SNL movies, like lots of different places. I think Mike Myers said one time he definitely <laughs> took like a hit from Chris Farley on accident during <laughs> during uh filming and stuff or like practicing for snl like he was very invested in it and he he definitely let other people know <laughs> that he was invested in it yeah. there was somebody found it online uh that when the uh grades are printing out uh for his when they when they post the grades up on the wall for his d plus that the one of the names is helen keller she got an <laughs> f <laughs> And, the, and to the right of Helen Keller, the Michael Jackson <laughs> got a D plus as well. So I don't know. I don't know right. if somebody planned that out. But so Helen he's in Keller, good company. Oh, whoops, Helen Keller. Yeah. She failed. <laughs> it was just his look of confidence during that test when he filled in her. He's just yeah. like, yeah, I got yeah. this. <laughs> he's like, I'm ca- I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody cheating off me is probably going to get this right. <laughs> I, the, you know, we always try to be critical and think of things we don't always see in these movies. I I noticed something that I didn't maybe pick up on as a kid, but like Tommy is such a genuine person mm-hmm. that everyone loves him, and he's almost he almost doesn't understand how special that is. Like he comes home and all the factory workers are like, "Yeah, Tommy, Tommy!" Like everybody loves him. His dad loves him, and because and, and he just reciprocates that back to everyone. So then, when David Spade, when he meets him, he's like, "You still talk to the gang from any of the gang from high school?" And clearly, David Spade was never really friends with anyone from high school. Yeah. But Tom, Tommy boy, thinks 
that he was. Like, yeah. he just automatically thinks that, of course, yeah. you were cool. Like, I th- always thought you were cool. Like, he why didn't you hang out with the old gang? He thought it was weird that he didn't. Yeah. You know, like, oh, really? I didn't I didn't feel that way. You know, yeah. that's like, you could see it. He you thinks know? everybody had the same experience in life as, as he did. And yeah. that's not a slag at him because, like, I really think everyone legitimately liked him. Yeah. And I don't think Tommy Boy, I used to think Tommy Boy maybe didn't like Richard, but he loved Richard from the start. Even from there, he's like, good to see you, man. Yeah. yeah. He's just got he's just got this level of uh like being a good person where he it, he doesn't see anything else like he's yeah. just like I, I he doesn't recognize that he's even this way like you were yeah. saying and so like whenever whatever he gives off he just assumes that other people give it off too you yeah. know and like once people are in trouble he's like well we'll get back there and like I got you man like we'll get back to where my energy is you know yeah uh like I, I don't mean to do this too early to you guys but I do have to dibs Chris Bar- Farley's Marquette rugby oh, jacket. God damn. Uh, as the item I want. So I'm you're sorry doing I'm doing early. I'm sorry I'm doing But this that early. is the rule. Like when, I, when your prop comes up in the movie, yeah, you bring it up. I have to, I had to do it because I had to claim it. It was the one thing I think I really want. You wanted. got one, Sean? Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna go. I want Sean f- or <laughs> Sean with Sean's. Yeah. I want uh Tommy Boy's little itty bitty underwear that he wears <laughs> later on. <in> <laughs> I want to wear those tidy whities Um <laughs> I I was just gonna oh. say thank you. I was just gonna say uh, the the Terminator glove, yeah. with the middle finger like that one. <laughs> That's the, the the modified one. Yeah, the old the regular one probably couldn't do the middle finger. I don't right? know. Yeah, There's no I, way. I think he always wanted to. I think there was only like four fingers on there, maybe. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> oh, or like, or, no. I think like the 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 index and the middle were one, so you could just bring those down, and then the others were free by themselves. Yeah. Oh, so okay. that's a good call. That's, act, that's a great one. Yeah. I like that. Or, or maybe I want the fan that you could stick your whole face into <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that <laughs> has no protective <laughs> gear. <laughs> that, that 1940s fan that's <laughs> there. <laughs> also, nepotism. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only a little. <laughs> like a huge office. Like Richard's been working for him for a long fucking time. Yeah. And as soon as Tommy Boy comes yeah. home, he's not qualified to do any of this shit. Yeah. He just gives him the corner office. Yeah, you've got a window. Why shouldn't you? You've been here 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 but they do they do seem to gloss over a little bit of the backstory of where they they say like Richard is his his right hand man so Richard's been like basically working for Big Tom doing all of his stuff for the years and yeah. he even says later like your dad was like a father to me yeah so I think there there's a lot of backstory that kind of got glossed over that that shows why Richard's just not very happy yeah. with yeah. Tommy Boy showing up but yeah. you get it you I understand do. yeah. yeah. Um, they could have dove a little deeper if they wanted to, probably. Correct. Uh, do you? Did you see? Um, you know, he's eating M and M's in the car. He's not supposed <laughs> to, such right? A great scene. Just dropped in a four forty with a six pack. You hold on to a car, this cherry. <laughs> just, you, you pretentious <laughs> prick, Richard. God, you are the awful. But the M and M's, they roll. Did you? Did you see how much how much those M and M's cost? Yeah, sixty nine cents <laughs> for that bag of M and M's. Yeah, I noticed uh, that this time around. I'm like, you, hell yeah! Are you kidding me? What's your inflation, bro? Oh, oh, I'll tell you right now. It's got to be. I didn't look it up, but I can tell you by the move for going to the movies the other day. A smaller bag was at least <laughs> five fifty. So. <laughs> Do oh, new cars man. still? I remember the old cars always had that giant <laughs> opening in the front. <laughs> in but the like back. new cars don't do that anymore, no, do they? No, come on, man. <laughs> but I do remember they're like ridged or like graded, you know. Now, what's so. beneath that? So was that all that chocolate just going into the engine block? Basically? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, my cars drive themselves nowadays. You know that. Melted right? chocolate Actually. on the dash. That'll really up the resale value. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, I love Rob Lowe immediately when he shows up <laughs> yes when he fucking hits the glass on that, that kid, kid making the face <laughs> yeah. like dude i love you rob Lowe. Yeah. i gotta say man i think he's my favorite part about this movie <laughs> when uh, watching it as an adult like I, obviously it's chris farley's movie but rob Lowe is just like his comedic timing and like his just prowess is so underrated yeah i yeah. fucking love him in this movie so much he's drinking like a carton of milk <laughs> <laughs> he just throws it into that baby carriage thing <laughs> We're really establishing this is the evil yeah. guy. Just in case you didn't know, this guy's a dick. Okay. Doesn't smell like mud, Chucko. <laughs> Did you notice? Uh, hey, have you guys ever been cow tipping before? No. 
Did has anyone in the history of the world ever been cow tipping? I don't know because it sounds like a thing that like everybody knows what it is, but I don't know anyone who's ever done. Especially it. like a Midwestern thing, I guess. No. But like this must be an Ohio thing because it's not an Iowa thing, at least as far as four out of four people in this room. <laughs> but, are we don't go corn tipping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I moved here from Saint from the big city of St. Louis, yeah, I remember somebody being like, "We should go cow tipping." Yeah, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And they're Why? like, "Oh, it's so cool." It's from Tommy Boy. No, and it, it was before it was before Tommy Boy, <laughs> oh, really? I think. So I was like, "What it, has anyone ever done that?" And why are there like, why are there like bar, bar signs, signs on the <laughs> yeah. Molson back there? Like, <laughs> are they just trying to prove that it's just right, this little farm is just right next to this shit? Oh ass yeah, bar? Right. I believe it. Uh, yeah, at first I was like, "What the fuck?" And then I started going, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, makes yeah. Total maybe sense. it is right." Yeah, because yeah. there's like a Molson sign at <laughs> Kelly's Bar yeah, or Kelly's? something like that. Can't believe you've never been cow tipping before. <laughs> oh, wait, don't tell me. Is this your first time? He's like, you got to get low. You got to get low. Get your shoulder right into it. And he's like, then what happens? They fall over. They fall over. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, cr- typical Chris Farley, he goes full in on that mud. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, that, mu- that mud was in his eyeballs. <laughs> oh, yeah. To, just to sell how great that shot looked. Oh. I mean, run for it. Just it was amazing. He was douched. Boy, did I get douched with mud. Yeah. <laughs> I get douched with mud. <laughs> Keep it between the udder and the loin. 33 option on two. On two. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so great. <laughs> hey, Chucko, that doesn't smell like mud. <laughs> it's yeah. like the freaking, I always thought as a kid he was like spraying gas on his boots. That's what I stuff. thought. I, did too. I always thought it was gas until I realized, okay, there's a water sign over there. With, and <laughs> I don't think that, I don't even remember that being a thing where there's just no. a thing of water. Just a water hose. A water hose next to the. It helps you put the fire out if the yeah, gas yeah. starts on fire. <laughs> maybe they were maybe they were like a trucker one, but I don't even see those there either. Yeah, I don't know. Like a, I don't know. It's just really weird. <laughs> I, just, I was just like, why is he spraying gas what on it? What if someone gets the wrong hose? <laughs> yeah, he starts putting water in their gas tank. That's not good. I don't <laughs> think so. You got to put a credit card in to get the gas to work. Buddy. Yeah, that's it. That's the water it. just works. The water just works. Yeah, <laughs> twenty five cents. It's twenty five cents. <laughs> All right. So at the wedding, Big Tom suddenly dies of a heart attack. After the funeral, doubting the future of the company without Big Tom, Callahan is in danger of being brought out, or bought out by a rival auto parts owner named Ray Zielinski. Tommy knows that the new brake pad division will save the company. He buys some time and agrees to hit the road with Richard Hayden to sell them in stores around the Midwest. It is revealed that Beverly and Paul are actually married con artists trying to take Big Tom's fortune. I liked a lot. There was an yeah. um, ad-libbed moment from Brian Dennehy, also Brian Dennehy. <laughs> He's fucking great. Oh, yeah. He's amazing. Um, uh, we'll we'll get we'll yeah. we'll continue on that. Please but his continue. his little ad lib moment that he has with Tommy uh, or Chris Farley Farley was um, when they're getting ready together to get their tuxes on and everything like that. Um, he added the line it was like uh, talking about his mother and everything. It was like I, after your mother, I had to move on, and you know I just uh, I think it's time for me to move on. He's like Dad, Dad, it's it's totally fine. Like that whole exchange was all Brian Dennehy. Like he just kind of brought it in from his real life, I think, is what they mm. were saying. I'm like, that's really good. I like that so much. And yeah. then I love uh, David Spade comes in and he's just, they're like, "How do we look?" He's like, "Chubby." And he's like, "Sorry, I, I'm drunk." And he seems champagne. like he seems like someone who would get drunk off of champagne. <laughs> he does. Like that seems impossible to me. <laughs> I'm like, I've done it. It's I'm hard. a bigger guy, but like I don't know. I've, 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 it has happened to me on mimosas, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> I regretted it for about three days. Yeah, okay. so, okay. <laughs> a lot of sugar, a lot of bubbles. It's huh? just all sugar, and if, I think I created an ulcer just that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fresh one. Um, no, I love Brian Dennehy in this movie. Um, one, I think he is a really, really amazing actor. Um, I'm not going to say like underrated, but I think sometimes underappreciated mm-hmm. um, because it, we think of him in like Rambo and some other stuff. But um, but I I really do think that he like no one else could have. I don't I don't see anybody else playing this role. It's very tough to think of someone else. Yeah. doing that. they seem like and father the, and son. And the Dude, chemistry sure. is just bonkers. I, like yeah. it blows up, man. They I love didn't it. really have to have many scenes. There's only like three scenes with Big Tom and Little Tom in this entire movie, and you automatically believe they didn't need anything. Like, you yeah. just go, oh, yeah, those guys really love each other, and mm-hmm. they're father and son. Mm-hmm. As soon you as buy Brian, it right away. As soon as Brian Denny, he's just like, Tommy! Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I, I buy it's, it. That's <gasps> it. <laughs> that's the, the <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. And even Chris Farley's head shake during <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
I bet. I bet comedy. I bet it was awesome for like Brian Dennehy to get to match his his energy, <laughs> yeah. match Chris Farley's energy. I bet that was awesome. You know. Oh um, man. But um. I I loved their scene where they got to do kind of their musical number oh. and everything. I thought it was amazing. I love this scene where he closes a sale at his own wedding and <laughs> handshakes on it. Eight, Eight whiskey, whiskey sours. sours. They still close the son of a bitch. <laughs> God, I'm good. <laughs> he wa- he is good though. Yeah. Like I would have bought from him. Amazing, right? And like I, I was just like, God, yeah, that guy's a, that guy's a really cool like salesman guy. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. Catch like, your popsicles. Yeah, catch your popsicles. <laughs> white gloves and like and then like. It just changes so quickly uh, on you, man. Yeah. And that is, it was like devastating. It like, still sucks. I, I think about that, and every time yeah. I watch it still, I'm just like, wow, that hurts. That hurts. And it was, tr- oh, sorry. No, you're good, man. Uh, it was a really cool kind of transition of like when they're all looking down at him, like when he's fallen over from them singing and everything like that. Yeah. Transition of them looking down, and it like kind of sw- swirls a little bit, and right into them looking down at his casket. Yeah. Just like a, a a week later or something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, that was a really cool, like, kind of director touch. I really liked that a lot. Yeah. The, the shot of him, Ugh. like, walking away. Well, the, first of all, it's it's Amazing Grace on bagpipes. Yeah. You like, put Amazing Grace over any sort uh, of footage mm-hmm. or anything. I, I was, like, tearing up watching. I'm like, what the fuck is happening to yeah. me? It's, it's Amazing Grace on bagpipes will do it. I don't care if you put that over anything. It will make, it will create this weird emotion to you. And then you see him going down this road that the wind is blowing like crazy and there's mm. this is dude this is a fall movie sure i we oh, missed wow. it we totally yeah. missed yeah, it on sure. our top five right. all movies but this movie from start to finish is like fall foliage yeah all over this place and that scene like i remember going i want to find that road yeah and i want to walk on that road <laughs> i want to play amazing and grace. i want to play amazing grace on back <laughs> yeah i think i bought a CD of like Celtic bagpipers playing Amazing Grace <laughs> after this was done. It was like, I love Jonathan Davis yeah, and I love <laughs> Amazing Grace. I should buy a bagpipe CD. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Surprisingly, Jonathan Davis gets mentioned a lot on our podcast. I know, it's weird. <laughs> Blank check, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did. I did expect for some reason that the band at the wedding was going to be the Dan Band, the Dan Band. You know, you know the the band that's in all the like the total eclipse of the heart. You know, oh, they're in all yes. the Will Ferrell. Yes, yes. The guy that swears. Yeah, I fucking need. Like I thought oh, for some reason okay. that was them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was just right before their time came around. But I just, for some reason I go, oh, who, oh yeah, another Dan Band <laughs> yeah. called the Dan Band. I love like okay. the wedding looked really fun too. I'm like, yeah. I know you want to leave me like yeah. I, I was like oh shit this is, this go is a good wedding. time fuck yeah it is yeah uh and also richard walking around with the camera and just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, man what i would love to get what I, of that. well what i love to get some of that <laughs> oh good lord <laughs> yeah. he goes ooh. <laughs> give, me that, give me that thing <laughs> it'll cost you <laughs> Uh, dude, I what really bums me out is we didn't get a chance to see Chris Farley move on from this, and because he died two years later, yeah, and like it's we crazy didn't, to think about. we didn't get to see. We just saw a flash in this movie when they're sitting on the sailboat. Yes, he like wow. I mean, he switches gears, and there's tears in his eyes, and I believe that raw emotion in him, and like it really sucks. That we didn't get to see him ten years later, like do his yeah. like Oscar award winning performance, because sure. like I think he could have done it. Think, I uh, really think he could have been done like it. a Robin oh, Williams 100%. almost, dude. Exactly, right? Yeah. Think about think about what we've some of these uh, comedic actors that we've had th- or that have kind of made their carved their way through Hollywood. Like uh, the obvious is like Adam Sandler. Where he came from, like Billy Madison, and then now we have uncut gems yep. and everything uncut in between. Jam. Uncut gem, uh, everything in between, I'm right? I'm sorry, you <laughs> son of a. <laughs> um, but, but but we have all those things, right? From Adam Sandler, think of like John Goodman. John Goodman was a great yeah. comedy guy, and now yeah, yeah. think of like some of the performances we've gotten from him. Yeah, you know. So to to you're right. The the sailboat was another note I had for like this just kind of gut wrenching yeah. thing that you're just like, man. He is. He's still trying to be this positive guy. And he's like, yeah, he he was a great guy. Yeah, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm really sure gonna, gonna miss, miss him, him. You know, and, you that, know? that's what got me, man. He's like, yeah. like, I'm sure gonna miss him. I'm like, fuck. I <laughs> know. I know. And <laughs> damn it, emotions. Yeah, I was like, God, that is really good. I man. do like what's her name? Sorry, Michelle. 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 Um, 
I do like too because that's kind of a real life moment where like when something like that happens to you, like you lose somebody or you lose like a dog or something like that. It's kind of all you want is just someone to be there for you, just to listen to what you have to say, not necessarily say anything, but like yeah. just kind of dump on you. Right. You know, just like not be alone. Those people are fucking great. And I, I liked that that was kind of like reflective of real life. Like yeah. pe- you have people like that in your life that will just kind of be there and let you vent. Pretty yeah. Much. And I love, sure. I love Michelle's stands. Chris Farley's about ready to stand up yeah. in the boat and yell the kids. She's like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she nails it. And like little touches in movies. Yeah. Why do the kids <laughs> run one way and then turn around and go the other I way? I think yeah. all three of their hats fell off too. I was like, yes, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Those little touches, they just go one way and they make yeah. a quick sharp turn. They're like, oh, the there's way. no exit that way. Go this <laughs> way. Go this way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know where they live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. If a girl, if a girl is like that happened in a similar situation, at least then like, like the girl you were kind of like seeing or hanging out with, like did that? Would you be like that was badass? Or be like well, that's kind of over the top? That's fine. <laughs> no, what my my do? wife has done that to kids before. Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I've, I've seen that happen before. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this in real no, life. No, no, it's <laughs> happened. <laughs> Hell yeah. When they're having like the meeting uh, about the company and everything like that, and like in the boardroom, uh, I don't remember the the whore bit that the old lady was saying. <laughs> and that's when the whore is coming. The whore. I kind of like her idea. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like is that like a director's cut or do you guys remember no, that? No, it was I do remember that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I was like, I have no I don't yeah. have any recollection of this. Probably because they skipped over it when I was a kid or something. I, I yeah. think I remember as a kid going, Oh yeah, you don't want the horse. Yeah, you don't you don't <laughs> want that. that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so all, I'm like, When did the horse come yeah, in? Yeah, mom, when did the horse mom, come in? Twenty dollars. The horrors? <laughs> the horrors. <laughs> Sean's like little Sean's like, Yeah, the horrors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the horrors. <laughs> <laughs> are there and the, like how are there no other salespeople in this company? Right, like they're, they're making us believe that literally Big Tom Callahan did all the all the face to face sales of everything in this company. Right, Th- which is very hard. Maybe maybe things were different back then, but this is a big company. Seems like, and they they do business at they're trying to sell like five hundred thousand units or something. Yeah. You can't really just like travel around and shake hands as the owner of a company seems like something that's uh, what you would do when you first start out yeah, like as an yeah. owner like you do it yourself and then once you obviously get more employees and everything you can get a right bit bigger. I, I know that like small town midwest and stuff now it's like i know that it's much more like you know face to face and it's uh it's you know i know everybody in town and it's very much like becoming like a a people a, a person of the people like we you know he's big tom callahan in this town of almost 30,000 people and this is the factory that keeps the town afloat you know yeah. and i think it's just like this small town midwest idea he travels around to all these places that are going to sell his parts and I'm the guy who's going to shake it. I'm the man who gives the guarantee, you know, yeah. up, up, up. And, like, it was just, like, 80, 80s, 90s mentality of, like, you know, handshake Yeah, business, maybe it was. You know, I, that's what it felt like. It's like the guy who owns, like, the the convenience store, the only one in town. It's He's, yeah. like, that guy, but it's just it just happens to be, like, a huge factory. Yeah. You know? Maybe it's metaphorical because Ray Zelinsky is taking over the the nation for auto parts, and you'd guarantee he's not the one going around make, making handshakes and stuff. So this is the this is the small guy that always yeah. button up against the new era. Right. And later on, Zelinsky, big town, small town. Lins- Zelinsky does say later on he's like he's like yeah, that's that's what happens because I'm a hell of a salesman and they don't know any better. <laughs> yes. So that's it's like they are. They're salesmen. Like that's what they are. That's what they do and that's what this movie's about. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, well let's move it on. So, uh-huh. on the road, Tommy fails miserably, causing tension between Tommy and Richard. When all seems lost, Tommy persuades a waitress to serve him chicken wings after the kitchen closes. Richard realizes that this is how Tommy should sell. Tommy ends up making his first sale and the two celebrate. Maybe the best scene in the movie is the whole, uh, he just kind of gives up on everything and takes those fucking toy cars and <laughs> does the whole bit. I, it, I It's my favorite scene. And you're driving along. And you're, you're driving, driving along. along. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing is, is too when he grabs like, the, he's like, whoa, that, <laughs> that was close. <laughs> now let's see if you have the other guys break bad. <laughs> and he grabs the other car oh. and David Spade's like, you're, you're, <laughs> you're driving along. <laughs> <You're driving. laughs> he's like, <laughs> I mean, I'm on to something here, dude. He's like, he's like, no, I've got him. I've got him. This is good. Obviously. How did he know that thing was a lighter? <laughs> well, it, 
<laughs> well, because he well, it should be noted he improvised this entire scene. Okay, okay. Chris Farley well, improvised this entire scene. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so like, I, I think they probably just said. Chris, we're gonna put a bunch of shit on the table <laughs> and just 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 like destroy this yeah. place. <laughs> and like, yeah. <laughs> and the, the, little, the shot of the car is just upside down and a flame's going. He's going, Oh, cause you wanted to save a little bit of money yeah, on the right <laughs> I love that the flame is in the foreground or whatever. <laughs> you want to save a few pennies. It's like and that's validate parking. Of now <laughs> of all the quotable lines in this movie like i can never pick one i know because it really is like as this movie went along i'm like there that that is used in everyday life that is used in every life uh-huh. but we've said that multiple times with the yeah. oh my, oh my God. God. <laughs> new guys in the corner puking his guts out <laughs> like we've said both those lines yeah. probably two or three <laughs> different times in other podcasts here yeah. comes the meat wagon <laughs> 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 I just I don't know why to end. You're driving along. You're driving along. You're driving along. <laughs> Anytime someone's like is mentioning like driving or anything, I'm like you're driving along. I'm driving along. <laughs> I say it. And no, you do. Uh, and speaking of another another just unbelievable classic moment, so the the fat guy in the little coat oh happens, which God, yes. which made me just audibly laugh out loud when this scene happened. But there was a behind the scenes on it, yeah. That apparently David Spade and Chris Farley shared an office at Saturday Night Live, mm-hmm. and this is a bit that Chris Farley would always do to David yeah. Spade, and David yeah. Spade's like, dude, it's not funny. And then David uh, Chris Farley would be like, hey. Hey Dave, I, I got to show you something. He was like, "Nope, I'm not turning around. It's gonna be fat guy in the coat." And he goes, "No, no, no, no. It's something completely different. It's something new." And Dave's made to turn around and be like, "Fat guy." <laughs> and so they added it. They're like, "We think people would probably think this is funny." Well, yeah. the the producers saw Ray him, Richard like spotted him, coat. spotted him doing that bit to him. <laughs> so they were just doing it because they're friends. Yeah, having a hilarious. Yeah, moment they were just together. doing their own thing, and the producers like spot him doing it and like, "Oh, you should do that. You should like have a song and do that, <laughs> Richard." Richard, is this your coat? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, dickhead. Don't do it, fat head. <laughs> they, they, I'm sure you read about this, too. You could probably chime in. I don't know the whole story. But like D- David Spade and Chris Farley did have a very good friendship, but it was also kind of tumultuous, too. Like yeah, They yes. were just such good friends yeah. that they would fight a lot of times. Yeah. And like one of the biggest fights that happened on set was because David Spade went out for drinks with Rob Lowe one night. <laughs> yeah. Because Chris Farley, Farley was, was the tired. Yeah. yeah, he was tired. Yeah. He went back to his hotel. <laughs> And David Spade's like, well, what the hell am I going to do? So he calls up Rob Lowe. And they go out drinking. They go out to a bar. And and Chris just always, just much to the testament of his personality, always wanted. He's the guy that could never like say no because he just wanted to be there He's with his FOMO. friends. Correct. He's got FOMO. <laughs> Major FOMO. But, but apparently he found out, yeah. and he kept the whole next day, he would just look at Spade and just be like, <laughs> how's Rob Lowe? <laughs> how's your precious how's, Rob Lowe? How's your precious fucking Rob It's funny because they, they both... <laughs> They both admit it like they had a crush on Rob Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> like he's like, they're like, oh, it's the biggest star in this movie. Like, holy <laughs> shit! They were like trying to woo him. Exactly, and, be and they're with great. Him. They're friends with him though too. But yeah, it's just very, very funny. <laughs> oh my god! It's it's a it's actually like they're that really caused like not not a rift necessarily, but they they had some real bouts. Like that led they to did. a physical altercation. Yeah. Between the two of them, like Farley stepped on his hand, like Spade Jesus slapped Christ. him back, and I think Farley ended up pushing him down, like into like a, like a small set of <laughs> set of stairs. Like it was a real thing, and like Spade stormed off. Like it was it was pretty intense. But during this time, um, they were flying back and forth from Toronto to right. New York. Oh, because they were still on Saturday Night Live. Almost, almost Holy like shit. every every two or three days, they were flying back and forth because they had to be. Writing and and performing for Saturday Night Live Jesus and Christ. then filming in Toronto and so they were literally together. I mean, oh, no. sewn together essentially for this part Not of their sleeping. lives. They they didn't sleep unless they hopefully got it done on the plane. But on the plane, they were even writing and rehearsing lines and jokes. And I mean, it was a very very intense schedule for them. And it led to this kind of explosion yeah. that eventually happened uh, in can, their friendship. You learn that, and then you can sort of buy some of this like raw emotion behind when they are fighting in the movie. Like 
even David Spade's performance of the <laughs> he seems like a nice guy. <laughs> like that is like nice guy. That is a really like that is like <laughs> he evil. does. Like, oh, dude. <laughs> he seems like, like a nice guy. There's joking around and then there's fucking being a dick. <laughs> that's yeah, that's and that's how that comes off. It's like, jeez, dude. <laughs> but like there's there I highly recommend just looking up uh like the making of Tommy Boy on YouTube. There's a documentary. For, it starts off with like stupid weird interviews <laughs> of like them on SNL and stuff, but just just like the the trajectory of the whole thing and how it happened. Yeah. But there's a there's a whole documentary of it's called like Tommy Boy making a cla- uh, making a classic, um, and you see their banter like uh, between takes and stuff like that, and it's literally just uh, uh, David Spade roasting Chris <laughs> Farley being fat and Chris Farley laughing his ass off. That's all it is. I'd watch that. It's yeah. so much fun. I highly well. recommend it. And you get like I I didn't remember this slapstick scene of the hood coming off being that funny. Like I oh remember it being God, funny, but dude. something about the comedic timing of it, how the they're singing, <laughs> the time that you told me you love me, baby. And the, and the hood goes up. You. <laughs> hood goes up, then it goes down, then they're gonna crash into <sighs> the car, then it goes up again, right? Like it, it's just like Man, that was slapstick at its best. Yeah, that, and that is probably that probably leads to my <laughs> one of my favorite lines when they're like, ah, ah, and you can see David Spade lock his eyes onto. He's like, hey, when we stopped for gas this morning, <laughs> I think it was you who put the oil in. He's like, hey, if you think I put the wrong oil in, you're wrong. And by the way, that would have no no, no. nothing to do with this exact situation. No, but you can't close the hood too well. If you take the can out of it. I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry you know selling ways to space. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Like that again, it's the comedic timing with the frame change of like to the front of the hood with the skin yeah. lodged in the <laughs> engine. I'm sorry about your car. <laughs> He's so oh. it is just fucking brilliant. <laughs> Their whole fight is hilarious. I I love the oh that's all you got. He's, He's like, like oh this is, that's like my mom hit me or something. I, was like, yeah, I, I wanted to kiss her to call your mother. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden he's got a two by four in his hands. Yeah, like, but we don't know where that came <laughs> from. <laughs> oh look, prehistoric fort. <laughs> I'd go check out prehistoric fort. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> him getting his ass kicked by him is certainly hilarious because he's just like he's just got a couple like lazy one-liners at David Spade, but then he just keeps getting just <laughs> just abused. <laughs> it is great. And the, the musical transitions of this movie is to that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're sitting at the table. <laughs> it's also in the in the scene where, where he busts off his door and they go into the gas station. No, it's still playing there, talks, too. Talks to the guy about the maps or whatever. He's like 22 miles away. I don't Davenport. Know. Yeah, um, get yourself a new map. Yeah, I what I, I want to bring it up too because we, we haven't really talked about it much. But Bo Derek's part as yeah. Beverly. Um, what do you guys think about that whole turn? Like uh, Rob Lowe and her right. actually being kind of romantic together. Uh, I like. I can buy it. Um, so Bo Derek wasn't really that old in this movie right. actually i believe she's like 39 is what is what i saw yeah she's no. like i swear to god um this I'm, was 95 95 so yeah she was born in 56 so she was 39 yeah jesus boom what uh and so but but like <laughs> i don't know if that's a compliment or a. I don't well, let's not go there. Yeah, no, we're good. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I assume she was much older for some reason. I think, I did she, too. I think she's I don't gorgeous in this movie. Oh, I think she yeah. has a show. She gets out of the like, pool. Yeah. No, son, that's for me. No, son, Hell that's yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> but she is, she is gorgeous. And, like, she is, uh, she's very, like, seductive in this whole movie yeah. for, like, everything that she does. So, um, uh, but, like, her, her flip flopping and everything, um, I mean, I I don't I buy it I suppose yeah you know it's weird to see her and it's it's cool I I, I think it's a cool thing to see like a, a character a actress like that do like the bad guy pretty much yeah. or, like the the vixen uh, of the thing I I like when they're at the um the carnival him her and Rob Lowe and she's like taking his ear like ow you're hurting me yeah <laughs> um and then he, and then they like uh if you wanna you wanna act like a boy I'll treat you like one. <laughs> But see, if that's, you want to be a man, if you want to be a big boy, <laughs> <laughs> like okay, weird. But, but that's in that that's in that weird gray area of it's not funny, but it's also not good acting. Yeah, like you know, a lot yeah. of the lines she does is just kind of like okay, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't really buy you as an actress for some reason. They like 
I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen anything else really that she's done before. Yeah. So I don't know what to compare that to. Was she just like a a bombshell that there's like we don't even care, or she maybe she like, just didn't care in this movie because it's such like a weird she role. Been a Bond girl or something. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's true. or like just like maybe just a so. cover girl her her entire career, but. Yeah. Um, it needed Tommy something though. Wingy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you know the? Did you read that that the who who Helen was supposed to be? Yeah, I uh, forget. But it's supposed me. to be Roseanne. Oh. That's right. And and they were gonna play it that off of sense. her being her character Roseanne, and like they were in Lanford. Like they oh. went to the diner where Roseanne worked in Lanford, dude, which would have been amazing. Do you know how easy it is to imagine her saying? God, you're sick. Yeah, <laughs> it was, she's like great value, Roseanne Barr. She kind of is, God, Helen. Um, like, you Helen. look like a you Helen. Look like a Helen. I love that. She's great. I'll I'll throw on the fires for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that 180 you just pulled on the waitress, and like <laughs> I love you. Just like I was just having fun. We still got that half a meat lover's pizza in the trunk. <laughs> in the trunk. <laughs> like, it's probably got deer blood on it. And yeah, shit. no shit. <laughs> oh God, we we missed the deer hit. That what we had to <laughs> oh well, yeah, we well the deer the deer will be coming. Uh, no, have they already hit the deer at, at the prehistoric? Oh, yeah. So the car there, the yeah. car's already exploded at this point. Yeah, basically, for the most Pretty part. Much. Well, it makes sense that they hit the deer in Iowa. By yeah. the way, <laughs> yeah, <it's> very true. <laughs> you think about that. We live in Iowa, guys, and um, yes. Deer, you just see deer. Yep. Deer are considered like like large rodents yep. here in Iowa. The one thing you <laughs> would never ever uh, consider doing, even in your wildest dreams, is putting the deer in your car. No, no, still Absolutely can't understand not. what that was all about. You Absolutely barely, you, not. You, it's like known not to touch them, even if after yeah. you kill them and shit. Just yeah. just keep on driving. Yeah. yeah. You just got good, if, and yeah. and it's great that your car is still drivable. <laughs> yeah, fact, the rule of the road is for anybody out there listening that maybe is from a big city that you're maybe you can drive along. You, you, along. <laughs> <laughs> you you literally need to if a deer comes out in front of you, just ram through it. Yep. You literally, take the deer. You instead take of something the deer. Else. You do not swerve. You just take that deer out, and that's a life lesson from yep. the confused breakfast. You for ever you. find yourself in rural Iowa when you're rural. when you're on your way to and come? You're just check driving along. You're driving along. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy. Not now, damn it. <laughs> Uh, so he finally makes the sale, uh, the, the guarantee on the box, but it's not on the box. It's not, it's not on, on the, the box. box. I kind of like that guy <laughs> I a lot. Do too. The box. The box. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very true. Like as a kid, as a kid, I didn't really like think through this process. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. But like, that's a great sales pitch. It is. It, it, it's it, it's glossed over a little bit, but it's true. Like, okay, so there's just some fucking writing on there. Who cares? How about you just buy something that who gives a fuck if there's a guarantee because it's going to be good. Right. That's how like the adult me thinks, but the the young me was like, well, if it breaks, at least I can get a free one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was really cheap. So yeah, I, I love I love the way he sells that scene. I too. Yeah. I like the way he I like the way he goes for what his dad said. Like you can you can stick your head up a boar's ass and see oh, oh, what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Butcher's ass. He tries it like, like T bone, but I'd rather take his word for it. He, he, he tries, tries it like <laughs> twice and then fails each time and but no, we'll get to one. It has to be it. your bull. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're the I'm the butcher. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, chicken wings. <laughs> so. Okay. I'll buy from you. <laughs> well, that's what? <laughs> <laughs> So, well, that well. and they celebrate at the that you get the the weight room scene with yeah. this girl. Uh, one thing I'd never noticed is when David Spade's uh, playing a little fireman time. Yeah, uh, he there's like a zipper noise. Yeah, yeah. and he's wearing boxers. His boxers. <laughs> I don't understand like, that. And that, that was it's the a, thing. Some, some sort of like leather S and M boxers, maybe. It could have just yeah. been like it might be, safety you know. b- safety boxers. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but like all these jokes. Right over my head. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like never even the, the little rascals. Thing. Yeah. yeah, man. I my my brother always said that. Like, who's your favorite little rascal? Is it Alfalfa or is it Spanky? Spanky? We just said that. And you're like, yeah, Spanky's my favorite little rascal. We I just like said him that because it was funny for the movie. Yeah. Like this time around, like, oh, they were all dick jokes. Oh what wow, you? the whole movie's dick <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Who is it, Buddy Wacket? <laughs> <laughs> he just sp- spank division. Spank division. <laughs> <laughs> Don't That's a pretty girl out there. <laughs> I wonder if she's dating one of the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's it's amazing. And apparently they both were, like, actually dated that they girl. They both dated that girl. It's real crazy. <laughs> they both just, like, go, oh, well, Tommy's going to date her, so I'm going to date her then, too. <laughs> it's weird. Like a complex between them. Jesus know, right? Christ. Uh, I'm going to go punchable face. You guys ready? Okay. RT. Okay. 
He works at oh, the 100%. RT's punchable face, right? I have right? a note that just says, fuck RT. <laughs> fuck RT. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. We, we're pretty good. I think we're like three for four on agreeing yeah, on punchable we're, faces. We're, so we're, we're uh, like on a good run here. Yeah. All right, so Tommy and Richard sell effectively to numerous automotive plants, eventually putting them all over the half million mark sales. However, Paul sabotages the company computers, and half of the sales are now canceled, causing the banks to foreclose. Tommy and Richard travel to Chicago via airplane. This was one of those scenes I meant in the physical comedy oh, when they're yeah. showing the montage and he runs into the glass. Oh, yeah. Like, holy shit. There was, I rewound it. His face print is on the glass from <laughs> how hard he hit it. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're they like, Tommy, no, it'll look fine on video. He's like, no, no I need to I yeah. need to put myself into this glass. So that documentary I watched, uh, the producers were talking. They're like, yeah, the producer, or like, yeah, the p- people who are making the movie are concerned when an actor wants to do his own stunts, but like the audience is really going to appreciate it. You know, like when yeah. they see the main guy do those things, like the physical pratfalls and everything, they're going to really, really think it's f- more funny if yeah. they can't yeah. like see the seam anywhere, you know. And, you, right. and he, yeah, he, but he went for it. It's great. And it's, pre- <laughs> and it's perfect. It's what makes it so funny, especially they really for little are, kids. They really are like a Laurel, Laurel and Hardy and uh, Abbott and Costello kind of thing. It's because like one is like bigger. Yep. One is like kind of fatter and more broad and everything like that. And, and then the, dumber. Yeah. And then the it's other one's like kind of more snide and, and, and really smarter. skinny and smaller. <laughs> it's it's perfect. It really is, man. And then you get uh, finally David Spade gets to like pull a joke on Chris Farley, the housekeeping. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's that's right. that was a any time I've ever knocked on a hotel door. I mean, that's every it, single time. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. <laughs> I do it without thinking about it. Not, it doesn't even have to be a hotel door. If I knock on a door, I'm, I'm probably going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and again, stuff that went over your head. Like I do it when my girlfriend's in the bathroom all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he finally gets off. He gets up when it's like, you want me to jerk you off? He's like, yeah. What kind of hotel is kind of yeah. hotel but is As a kid, you're like, oh, he's just getting up because he's mad. They keep knocking on the door. <laughs> but yeah, you're like, no, oh. he's, he needs to see what's going on here. Yeah. Who's oh, on the Richard, other end of this? I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> don't hide your feelings richard <laughs> <laughs> so do you think do you think uh tommy boy had a right to be mad at michelle here though like he handles it really well i his his reaction is like the same thing that i would probably do like how can you be happy yeah I like or how can you not, how can you kind of not be right he's, right he's like we were so close though like how like how could you like what happened you know like what'd you do and she's like, I didn't do it. I don't know. Like, it's just, obviously, she doesn't know yet yeah. that she got sabotaged or whatever. Mm. Um, but his reaction is very, very, like, that's how I would be, I think. But she, like, if uh, I'm owning a company, she needs to adapt to my policies or or else. You can't yeah. just sit here and go, this is my way. This, uh, this is how I do it. And this is how it works. It's yeah. Like, and, you need, and, we uh, need to know how your system works. So let's just all get on the same page here. Yeah. And uh, by the way... What's her What's her reasoning for uh, not using the file cabinets? That's true. You have to open them. That's it. That's it. Lazy. Lazy, so, selfish behavior yeah. from an employee here. Yeah. And, like, and sh- I guess she is making herself irreplaceable to a degree. Yeah, I mean, that's actually this, really smart. In this way. I believe in that. But it's just like, man... You you are like this still does come back to you and who who else could take the blame at this point because she is the one yep. all she literally says in the beginning all the orders come through me and go out like everything so yeah who else can you kind of put this on at this point it's true I I have to say too before before that when Rob Lowe does go into her office to try and change things and sabotage and everything. <laughs> He's already beaten the fuck up from the dog, the dog. And, you know, yeah. like everything. Um, and I like how his plan to sabotage him at first is to blow up all the fucking trucks. <laughs> yeah, the good like plan, Rob Lowe. Gunshot and explosions yeah. aren't going to create some sort of yeah, what attention. Kind of, what kind of Looney Tunes bullshit is he on? <laughs> exactly. <man? Like, laughs> dude, it took me back though to when cars used to have the automatic seatbelts. <laughs> yeah. Such a fucking that thing did not last. No. No. <laughs> Um, when he's the the fucking tube thing, yeah, like at banks and shit. <laughs> and he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go now. Like, I gotta go." Uh, like, he takes he takes a job. He's like, "I gotta go." He's, oh, like, fucking, he's so good. He really. Is. Oh my god. I love him Did you movie. realize he's basically the same character in Wayne's World? Yeah, like yeah. it's just like the same guy. Just hey, just be a dick. He's just like, he's just smarter, I think, in Wayne's World. <laughs> but but that's it. Like, yeah. I'm gonna watch Wayne's World tonight. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh uh, I do love so David Spade gets drunk and I I never realized how it doesn't make sense. He goes, 
Towns to fish, people to barrel. People to barrel. Fish it's like barrel. <laughs> it shouldn't it be pe- people with the fish, <laughs> yeah. towns to barrel. <laughs> yeah. I never noticed that before. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I, it's you know, this is kind of a uh, you call it a trope, if you will, a kind of a classic little mo- maneuver. They have now one eighty, right? They've one eighty ah, their gotcha. roles. Yep. And you got David Spade in the driver's seat with his hat backwards and his jacket <laughs> on, and he's drinking beer in this. And they're the, driving along. And he's driving along. <laughs> they're driving along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh and he's like he's drinking beer and and then you have responsible yes uh you know tommy boy who's uh, he's like you can't drink drink in a car he's like don't you know he's like i did not know that <laughs> <laughs> so and then by the way um the bees thing right yeah <laughs> he says little move my dad taught me he's like just do what i do and he's like so then i'm thinking like so tommy's been through this as a child <laughs> <laughs> like, so his his big tom's been drinking <laughs> and driving with his kids in the car <laughs> yeah. and been like kid we're gonna get out of this <laughs> he's like, oh just do what i do okay <laughs> he's having a really dark period in his life after his wife died i think that's yeah, what it was. <laughs> i'd like to think that somewhere someone has tried this Oh, God. I hope like it has someone has to have tried it. I pray. But like <laughs> as soon as you get out, they shoot you, I think. Right? Yeah. Isn't that what happens? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're driving along. You're driving along. You're driving along. You're driving along. But, <laughs> we're having a good time. He says uh, they're never going to believe I wasn't drinking. It's like, Tommy, um, you could just pulled over. You could pulled over and been like, hi, uh, breathalyze me. Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm good. Like, yeah, hey, true. My buddy, he's I'm, I'm transporting him. Yep. Basically, well, I'm just good. Driving him home or whatever. Yeah, you're doing. it smells like booze in here because that's what he's been doing. Yeah, exactly. Because look at my puke friend here. Yeah. This is literally <laughs> a, a, a move that um, I was coming home from a wedding with my my friend Brent, and like he he actually pretended to be more drunk than he was when we got pulled over <laughs> by by a cop, and uh, like I was like, oh yeah, I'm just you know giving him a ride home and stuff. Like we're going going on home now. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Well, well anyways, you know, <laughs> anyways, you know, just just make sure you uh, you get that. That light checked out, and then he let us go. Cool. Yeah, and I was dude. like, "All right." To move my dad taught me. <laughs> to move my dad taught me. <laughs> when I was sitting in the lap. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. So they get on the airplane. I mean, that whole scene is just pure comedy. How was there dude. an SNL skit sketch of these two as flight attendants? Because there had to have. Well, oh, man. David Spade did the bye mm, bye. Uh, bu- bu- yeah, yeah. bu- 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 but bu- I don't. Bu- but I don't think there was like a flight attendant thing. That would have been great. It would have been. That whole scene was hilarious. He's just yeah. a, b- b- a big dumb animal, folks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big dumb animal, isn't he, folks? <laughs> It's pretty good. It, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's hilarious. But then there's like one of many <laughs> physics issues that I have with this movie. Yeah. Where he he gets caught in the thing and he flies back from the toilet, but flies out the door right. to the side. Like yeah. Yeah. More, some physics don't exactly add up in this movie from time to time. A little but, bit wrong. But yeah. but it's still a wonderful joke that they played with David Spade walking in and walking out immediately. <laughs> yeah. I, love I think that. that was a, like Chris Farley's just clearly baffled by. It. He's like. Oh, how did you? <laughs> Come on, man. We got to get going. He's like, get in there. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> when he finally falls down, though, and he's in and he's going, uh, uh, and he's hitting his shoulder yeah. against the door. It's, Chris Farley is the king of physical comedy, as far as I'm concerned. Fucking baby thing, I think. I guess is what it is. <laughs> it comes down on him or whatever. Oh, God. Yeah. We've all been in an airplane bathroom like, wow. Yeah. It's not possible. I'll tell you what. If you have trouble with a seatbelt, uh, just put, press your light there, and I'll have Tommy come come by and hit you on the head with a tack hammer. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> How are the pilots not listening to this going, okay, <laughs> no. hey, this something's wrong here. Wait a second. Yeah, <laughs> this is an intercom. I mean, we're listening. <laughs> it is a great little scene, though, um, because... Uh, just getting them, getting them to Chicago, and I love David Spade's exchange with the the flight uh, yep. person. Uh, well, then again, we got '90s airport here, walking right to the the terminal, it's true, right up to it, asking for tickets. There's none of this, like, yeah, I don't know, I, I. I wish we were still there. Yeah, <laughs> guys. We're never gonna go back. <laughs> never gonna be that way. But yeah, yeah. Another line though. What are we serving today? Chicken or chicken? <laughs> chicken. <laughs> 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 
God damn it. All right, so let's finish this. So Richard and Tommy have a brief meeting with Zelensky, but he informs them he only wants Callahan for the brand name and will close the plant in Sandusky. They are escorted out. Michelle finds out the secret between, behind uh, Paul and Beverly. Beverly. Tommy gains access to the boardroom and tricks Zelensky into purchasing brake pads, and then Paul and Beverly are outed. Paul attempts to escape, but is arrested later. Tommy assumes the presidency of Callahan Auto Parts. Callahan Auto. Callahan. <laughs> Callahan's a premium name. I love Dan Aykroyd. Of yeah. course. Dude, he, he did all of his lines and all of his shots in two days. Yeah. Less than two days. He probably like, walked in like, let's go. Yeah. Oh, you want more of a Chicago accent? And Here we go. he's got a lot of lines, too, and they're really, really punchy. And I'm just like, damn, dude. God, I love that. Even the, yeah, I love even that. the ice down your balls, your Z. Like, yeah. that. that's really hard. I had never memorized that quote because it's really hard, and yeah. he just nails that shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I when they go into that building, which is the Zelensky do, do, building, do, 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 and... He's like, I'll I'll go over to the bank. Yeah, for some there's reason, just a bank on you, the main you floor. Go, he's like, you can't say excuse me in a bank, just like you can't like say bomb on a plane. Okay, this will only take a second. <laughs> yeah, you cannot <laughs> say that. It's just you can't yell anything in a bank, or they're gonna assume. Yeah, you just can't. <laughs> you used to not be able to wear masks in banks, but yeah. oh. times can change. Yeah, yeah look that's at a that. good point. You know what I'm just saying, man. You're right. I love I'm the sure. way Lewis, the my favorite guy that works at Callahan Auto is Lewis. Yeah, when he goes. Tommy just sold half a million brake pads. Yeah. Tommy just sold, sold half, half a million, million brake pads. pads. Like, that is a great performance yeah. from yeah. Lewis. Yeah. I love that shit. And it really does connect the town. Like, a lot of the towns not really care. They're like, oh, we want to watch Gladiators. <laughs> 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 we want to watch the cartoons. <laughs> but the, but the, auto, like, the Callahan Auto people, like, are holy shit. Tommy yeah. did it. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. I like it earlier, too, with, with Lewis. The whole, like, he's, bu- he's buffing the, <laughs> yeah. the cans or the, yeah. the, the oil. The cans. brake pads. Yeah, whatever yeah. they are. Oil filter. <laughs> and, like, he's just like, yeah. Hey, can I try that? Yeah. Give it a shot, man. It's like, just give give this guy rant. I know it's the sons or the 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 son of the company or yeah, whatever. Why not? Whatever. You know, why nice not? distance. Hey, nice <laughs> distance. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I have a question. So, like, why why did Beverly not get in any trouble in this? I don't know. It's it's weird because like she just immediately goes to Zelensky, like immediately like, like swindles him. Yeah. He's a gold you know, digger, man. Which is how, of course, Ray Lezinsk- R- Zelinsky lost his auto park company and then right. moved to Hawaii. We've Correct. already established yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. She, she yeah. bled him dry, just like yep. she was planning to do to uh, Big Time Callahan. And that movie so. turns out beautifully. We all know that. <laughs> um <laughs> but Spoilers like she, in that movie, she though. She literally should be arrested. Why is it all, why is it all Paul Cause, here? Because she was never... Well, because it's illegal for her to be married to Tom... Because she's already married, right? Is that what they say? No, that's just why she couldn't technically that's, have gotten married that's to Tom. Right. That's right. Right. So actually, but, what did Paul do wrong here? So Paul had, oh, had okay. been convicted previously of of like mail yes, fraud, and now several different types of fraud. fraud. So okay, actually, we're working this out. So technically, Beverly didn't do anything here. No one knows like what some her sort of collusion. You know, you would think, but no one knows this yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be some sort of accessory charge. You know what I mean? But Ray's I, gonna take care of it. Yeah. I mean, He's, there should be an investigation. I mean, I know uh, Big Tom was probably unhealthy, and that's why he has heart attack or whatever. But like, there should be an investigation. Right. Like the day of the wedding, right? Jesus, that like she didn't like maybe she had some sort of she it's put some those eight whiskey sours, bro. Catch <laughs> 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 popsicles and whiskey yeah. sours, man. It was rough. Why were they dropping weights onto car seats? <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like to if Ray the heft, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like if it. Ray Zelinsky like spent a little more money on quality parts and not like weird testing facilities, <laughs> right. the shit out of this. Things. Like and he's testing things that don't matter. Like let's just see how much weight we can drop on the seat before it breaks. Right. You know, maybe just put that money into quality auto parts, and you don't have to buy Callahan. It's true. I think that's. I think that's accurate. Do you feel like that? Yeah, well, I feel hundred like percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of those crash test dummies, they can't be. That cheap? No, you know, uh, and then and then the second physics issue, he's on the car hood and the car slams on its brakes, but then he flies off the, the, uh, the opposite <laughs> direction <laughs> to the side and lands on his diagonally. <laughs> I mean, that could have got really dark. Like, what if he could have died? Yeah, what if they were just like he just splatted against the wall? The car never stopped. Nobody hit the brakes. Yeah, and they're like, wow, that guy just died. And you proved the Zelensky brake pads are terrible. <laughs> All on national they, television. They literally don't say we got lives. it. We did it. <laughs> we got it. We win. Speaking of which, um, they find out all these things about um, uh, the the bearishes, right? Uh, about Paul and Beverly, and th- th- he's like, oh, he li- they lied to my dad. 
you lied to my dad. And he's like, they've got all this evidence now. And why did he feel the need that he's got to put on a show with like the road flares? <laughs> Like, all you have to do, I think, at this point is walk in, and I know there's security there and everything, but you could have also, you could have maybe made a phone call, be like, hey, I need to speak to Mr. Rittenauer. Like, no I cell know. phones. They uh, couldn't have called anybody uh, in the boardroom. Uh, Shit. It's, I'm, ta- I'm just saying, like, there's pay phones. There's like, hey, I need to speak to so-and-so. There's got to be something else they could have done other than road flares and a lot. <laughs> maybe Michelle's cop brother could have showed up and escorted yeah. them in the building. How, about how, did, how did she get all the details, like, on the piece of paper? He brought them to her. Yeah, it, uh, fax. Yeah, fax machine. I bet. Well, it was a fax. pager. Yeah, it's a pager. Yeah, a pager. <laughs> somebody up there had a pager. But yeah, I mean, to. I mean, come on, like, th- hey, did th- somebody th- page me from this number? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who is this? <laughs> who is this? You up? <laughs> you call me <laughs> asshole. Uh, <laughs> I imagine that conversation happened a lot in this time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you called me asshole, uh, but yeah, I think I think the 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 road flares thing, although funny, it seemed like almost unnecessary right. to a to a point. Well, like, oh wait, I just I just fixed this for myself. He had to get the news crew. Oh, he had okay. to get the news yeah. crew. Yeah, I okay. just realized that. I'm sorry, I just blew up my whole thing. Right, that, well, makes, that sense, makes sense actually. We'll now two it's security awesome. guards at the bank, just like yeah, he was. He's a big guy. He had a huge gun and he hit me in the head. Yeah, he hit me with, in the head. A hammer. with a hammer. With a hammer. Several times. <laughs> I had to give him my gun. <laughs> Those are the type of roles I wish like AJ would know, be. Exactly. Like, you just need a role in a movie just where that's you, man. Just going, yeah. Uh, All right, I don't know. After being hit in the head many times with a hammer, <laughs> I had to give him my gun. Uh, so all is saved, and we we get another dingy joke, and Tommy Boy gets his wind and sails yeah. away, and it's just a what that reviewer nice was ending. saying though. It, was, it is a nice ending, like I, I, it's very cheesy. Like I gotta say, I I'm not a huge fan of the music in this movie. Like I I think that it's good. It's just it feels like so like here's very Oxygen Network. Yeah, if to me. it just feels like very very cheesy. It, yeah. <laughs> It kind of feels like Three Ninjas a little bit, to be yeah. honest, but in a in a different way for yeah. some reason. In an adult way. Some yeah. more adult, like Three Ninjas idea. Yeah. <laughs> like a, a more tolerable way, I yeah. guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's nice. He's like, hey, Dad, I need some wind. I got to go see my girlfriend and give him some wind. Yeah. All that heaven bullshit. Mm. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> you telling me Big Tom's not alive looking down on me right now, yeah, bro? He's not doing that? My goodness. Shit. So and well, his speech is good. Heaven too. could it's be real, and if you believe in heaven, I, I that's great for you. Jesus, I love that. Sean, love <laughs> God, it's great. <laughs> it's great. I think it's great. So, so I'm anyway, getting, why like, am I getting in trouble again? <laughs> and you're driving along. <laughs> you're driving along. Yeah, you're driving along. <laughs> I'm never not going to say that. Just, that's just going to be our segue from here on out. What, am I, on? what am I on? A segue. <laughs> driving along and driving along. If somebody says something that's like, okay, we're going to move on. Yeah. <laughs> and we're driving along. <laughs> Con- oh, continue, God. JJ. This is the uh, last just, thought. I'm just saying, like, it, it is. It's, it actually, the movie caps off really well. This is obviously some sort of coming of age, like, uh, story that we're being told and I think it finishes really well I love the little jokes played in he points at Richard's hair again and <laughs> I think it's very funny it's a very like moving little speech he gives and then yeah we've got the end where he talks to his dad and then um, it's it's again I think this is like we finally got to see some Chris Farley acting chops not just him being a physical guy yeah. mm-hmm. you know and so that's why I was really I was I, I really appreciated that this time around for sure definitely well, we stripped all the nostalgia. We've looked at it with a critical modern eye to see if it still moves us. AJ, what'd you think about it this time? What's your rating? I think it's great, man. Um, I really do enjoy the movie. I, I, I'm more than happy to watch it again. You know, I, I will say this. Um, if you're going to go and, and watch this and rent this, there is an option for standard definition. Smash that button. Okay. <laughs> standard definition is the way to watch these types of movies. The 90s, if you can watch those movies, yeah. and standard def, it gives you a little bit more of that. It's like it's like watching digital VHS. Yeah. Cool. You know? <laughs> it's like, it instantly brings me back to like the like popping it in a VHS. Yeah. And so it's it's a little fuzzier, it's a little warmer, you know what I mean? And so I, I highly recommend that. Uh, and it costs you save you a buck or two. You know, call collect. Uh so I love the movie though. It was a good. It was a really fun rewatching it. I wasn't bored at any point necessarily, and uh, I probably don't. I didn't. 
I'm not like laughing my ass off like I was as a kid. So, but that being said, I believe I was in an 8.4. I'm going to give this uh, an, an eight straight up. Nice. Eight straight up for the age. Sean, what do you got, man? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with AJ. Like, I don't laugh out loud like I did uh, when I was a little kid, probably. I, there are certain moments where I'm just like, God damn, that's funny. Yeah. Um, and I do laugh. But, um, yeah, I think I, I like that it's a road movie. I love road totally. movies, and it's a buddy movie. Um, and I, I love those kinds of movies like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It's, like, it's totally a throwback to that, it seems. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's a fine movie. I I would definitely watch it again when it's on or when when people are going to be watching it in a group or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna I'm a straight up six. Straight up sixer for Sean. For me, like I, it was an absolute laugh out loud for me. Like I hadn't seen this in in maybe a decade, yeah. and it was just like. I knew all the lines, yet it still made me laugh out loud. I had a couple whiskeys when I was watching, sure. but uh, it still made me laugh out loud. Like this is this is the best Chris Farley movie. Unfortunately, we didn't get a ton of them, yeah. but this is his best thing that he's ever done. I think so, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's it's because it's this long form thing, and it's unfortunately he died two years later. I like to env- envision him as. When we talked about in Fifty First Dates, like he's just kill- Callahan Auto took over the world and he's killing it and loving life, and he's got big time. He's got Tom Callahan the fourth that in, yeah, in his life. On the I'd wall. like I like to picture <laughs> that that is really what happened. So I'm just down a little bit, man. Like I'm a I'm a seven point nine. I, I I think this movie is fantastic, and it's easy to like. Well, it's not critically acclaimed. Like it's like it's just a, it's just a great it's movie. A, it's really it's a fun one. So our executive producer Josh Miller from Patreon, aka Douglas Bubble Trousers. Here's what he said for his critical rewatch. Upon rewatch, I guess I didn't realize how many quotes I still use to this day. My favorite being, it doesn't hurt so much here or here, but right, <laughs> right about here. here. <laughs> and even to this day where it might not be word for word quotes, I'll say and act in the same manner as Chris Farley Tommy. When you get right down to it, I think he really just played himself. Trying to take away the nostalgia for this one is tough, but even when I do, the movie holds up great. It was never made to be more than it was. The jokes are mostly timeless. We lost a treasure with the death of, death of Chris Farley, this movie being his best as a main character with just a ton of great supporting characters. David Spade, who's always been good, these two guys paired together was gold. Towards the end of the movie, after the car had been trashed and they used cardboard to cover the missing door, they use a marker <laughs> to draw a door handle on the outside. <laughs> I like the I like the dog gate too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Long story short, this movie is inf- infinitely rewatchable. While I still love the movie, some of the flaws are slightly more annoying, but only hurts the score a bit. My nostalgic score. 8.1 that takes us for a 7.5 group wide uh which uh you'll be happy to know is just right around in the middle right there that is tied with mighty ducks and wow. i feel like that's pretty great i feel like that's pretty good i like yeah. that i think yeah. me and uh me and mr douglas bubble trousers i think we're on the same page I, I think, think we. I think we're. I think me and you have a connection, my friend. Some sort of symbiosis. Yeah. Symbiosis. I'm going to make this official that if anybody here fucks up, we're replacing him with Douglas Bubble Bubble Trousers. Yeah. So. yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. So that way, we're going to you know make yourself irreplaceable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, shit. Jesus. <laughs> oh damn it. Jesus. That goes for myself too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More heaven jokes. Like <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're driving along. You're driving along. <laughs> oh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next Wednesday. Uh, we were going to tackle a big one for us. This is a very very big one we've been talking about this since day one and it was chosen directly by patreon top tier members the big lebowski (sighs) after that we're going to deep dive into the amazing year of 1985 which was unreal and we're all picking our individual top five movies from that year if you're new to the podcast go back in time this time last year mortal Kombat dropped oh fun we had a lot of fun with that people realized how much i hate the mortal Kombat theme song (laughs) and And now it's our theme song (laughs) the only episode we recorded twice yeah that's true oh my god thanks for the reminder sean (laughs) yeah sean wow (laughs) you're driving along you're driving along All right, thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. 
Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to confusedbreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at confusedbreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.